Okay, so now I want to talk about Brexit. Uh, Brexit is sort of a similar uh, uh, economic disruption. Not similar in terms of how it disrupts, but the fact that it's just profound. What's happening in England is a profound economic shift away from the European Union. And just like when you first joined the European Union, there's going to be some growing pains when you become an independent country again. One thing that's been happening is that the pound, the British money, that they're essentially purely dependent on at this point, they no longer have the euro to fall back on. I suppose the banks can hold euros, but they don't have the same uh, cushion that the European Union might have provided them up until now. Um, that's not to say that the European Union was ever really overly interested in cushioning England. European Union seems much more interested in cushioning its weaker members for some reason. Uh, but that's a different discussion. I just really wanted to talk about how Brexit is impacting certain companies within England. And uh, it seems to be the biggest casualty so far from Brexit has been the tourism industry, the travel and tourism industry. It's funny how that's also the ca one of the major casualties of coronavirus now. But uh, one of the, the major companies... Or the mo one of possibly the most major travel country company in England, which serviced mostly in Germany actually, is the Thomas Cook Company. Thomas Cook did vacation packages, vacation bundling, um, uh, you know, discount flights when you buy with you know a package, luxury uh, vacations around the world. They had uh, Thomas Cook Signature, which is an even more luxury. Uh, package bundler and they came to the point where they were in negotiations with shareholders and proposed lenders and they just could not come to an agreement and it's such a strange experience I can imagine to be a company that's older than anybody who works there uh, was working fine maybe five years ago you know successful growing initiating new brands uh, Thomas Cook had Subsidiaries in, in Germany, especially uh, Neckermann Risen, Ogres Tours, Air Marin, Thomas Cook Signature, Booker Last Minute. They had all sorts of different services that exclusively catered to up and, uh, upper end markets around Europe. And then all of a sudden, they were in the hole. Brexit concerns was the primary reason. They could not find new funding as easily. They could, because I mean, if Brexit happens, the company is in England, and then most of their services are provided to Germany. What's that going to do to the regulatory environment? And we already know European Union is crazy about regulations. So it's very likely that there would be perhaps even some uh, uh, repercussions, some, some, some fallout between the German market and the English market that's by choice. You know, maybe one side wants to punish the other. Anyways, they came to the point where they couldn't get funding. They needed 226 million euros to keep going. I'm not sure for how long, probably for some months. But they couldn't get it. And the, the largest company was China's uh, Fosun Group, who's, you know, because they're from China, because of how Chinese businesses are all integrated together, obviously this Fosun Group is under pressure too from its own trade war with the United States. Uh, this uh, Thomas Cook problem was pre-coronavirus, just by, a, just by a hair. So we don't know if coronavirus was already in China. Fosun Group pulled back. They issued a statement that said, oh, we're so sorry. Uh, we hope to do business in the future. I mean, real generic, no specifics. And, you know, but it wasn't just Brexit. It was, it was competition from low-cost carriers. It was uh, insurance customers, um, uh, in insurance policies that were uh, growing too fast. And, it, you know, insurance com companies now have to repatriate all of these customers. So I guess it's legitimate for them to raise prices as well. Um, and the UK government was unwilling to bail out Thomas Cook. I'm not exactly sure why in light of the Brexit situation. You know, it's an unusual situation. It's not, um, it's not 
it's not bad economics to step in in a moment of true upheaval. It's bad, bad economics to change your system, your, I don't know, your peacetime system, your prosperity system, just to favor a different group within your economy. But you're having a Brexit. And then you have this, this wonderful tourism company, this story tourism company, and now it goes out of business. And uh, it's just sad. But it's not, it's not the only one. A uh, domestic English uh, flight provider, leading domestic English carrier, uh, has gone bust. Fly, fly B, fly, fly B. Uh, the, good, the government could not step in to save them without seeming partial. And there's other competitors within the market already. Thomas Cook is a little bit different. Uh, it was sort of a, a, such a leader. I think the government could have stepped in. Fly, I don't know. Those planes get sold. New people are flying the same planes. It's just because the brand couldn't manage themselves. The planes still exist. They're still in the airports. They're going to be used by somebody. This is much more of a temporary problem. I understand that investors lose out. But Thomas Cook, tens of thousands of employees, painstaking agreements that have already been made, uh, hundreds of thousands of clients around the world just left stranded, uh, lawsuits galore once they get home. Uh, it seems like sloppy politics and sloppy economics to let Thomas Cook go out of business, but Flybe is a little bit more peel off one company sticker and paste on another, and it's the exact same plane. So I'm not as uh, I'm not as uh, disappointed about it. But it demonstrates what happens when your country's currency gets weak relative to the dollar. You want to make sure that you maintain the integrity of your economic base and of your currency if you're a government or you start to see especially service oriented businesses uh, they suffer first because they have to use international money in order to buy supplies in order to cater to a outside audience and then suddenly uh, or to buy gasoline for their airplanes and then suddenly that disparity becomes what 20 percent all of a sudden your currency falls 10 percent dollar goes up 10% for a different reason and you have service businesses within your uh, economy which service businesses scale immeasurably compared to product businesses. You don't want to build an entire business, uh, uh, an entire economy around products. Services are vital and I think they should be protected the same as perhaps, uh, would you save Apple? Yes, because they're a fundamental uh, for the industry. Well, Thomas Cook was just as much. I, I don't understand.